Well, again, thanks for joining us. And if you're just joining us, you're still watching the press, switching your life from the nation's capital. And you're right on time because the discussion is about to begin. And we joined the uh, uh, analyst who will be giving us justice as to some of the headlines that made the dailies this morning. He's no other person than Comrade Olu Omotosho. He is a public affairs analyst and, of, of course, uh, the National Publicity Secretary to the Action Alliance. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Thank you so, so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here too. I'm right. glad to have you join us. Mm -hmm. All right. Also, this is a, a reminder to you viewers that you can also be part of this uh, discussion by calling us via the number that will be displayed on your screen. And also remember that when you're calling in, do turn down the volume of your TV set so we can hear you and communication is done properly. All right. Uh, with that, let's get into the business of the day. So, Mr. Olu, uh, one of the headlines that uh, made it to the front page this morning, and I'm going to take this from the Nigerian Tribune, it says, Senate justifies the purchase of 160 million Naira SUVs for members. I'll have to take the first part of that story just to give us an insight of, of what the story is. And it says, amidst criti criticism, Senator representing Kogi West Sunday Karimi has justified the purchase of 2023 model Toyota Sport Utility Vehicles SUVs at the cost of 160 million naira each for 107 senators. And it's saying, uh, according to ch uh, checks, uh, checks also revealed that President of the Senate, Goswami Lakpabio, and his deputy, Barao Dibun, will also take two bulletproof cars at the cost of 320 million naira each procured by the leadership of the Senate in collaboration with the management of the National Assembly. And the story goes on, on and on. It says investigation revealed that federal lawmakers in the House of Representatives who also received a Toyota Land Cruiser of 2023 model at the sum of 135 to 140 million naira each. How do you react to this? Taking into consideration uh, what is going on right now in Nigeria, the state of the economy, and how Nigerians are reacting to some of the policies that were put in by the uh, president, and how it has affected Nigerians. Now, comparing that to what we are saying, 160 million naira each for 107 senators. Thank you. Um, we are in a country where sincerity is so scarce and uh, of course people will come and tell you this is the way to do things uh, but um, you'll discover that um, they are doing the contrary themselves so it's uh, a matter of uh, just do as i say and but mm. not as i do, do. Mm. now we're talking about um, um, a sick economy our economy is so sick and the naira had become so excessively respectful of the of the dollar i mean prostrating and then pleading for mercy and uh, of course rather than we do things that will give it some liver mm -hmm. so that nara will get will gather some liver and be able to stand, stand to uh, i mean and stand uh, and look at the dollar in the face and say look this is my country yeah you cannot dictate what happens here mm. but what do you get what do you see our leaders are doing the same thing our leaders are aiding mm. uh, the i mean the battering of the naira mm. um we have been hearing this um uh, this, this this slogan for a very long time mm. buy nigeria leave nigeria mm. do nigeria do all of this where are those vehicles produced mm. from those vehicles are imported and then we are talking about that uh, naira that naira is, is is being strained of course this is part of the, these are part of the things mm. because that means they are not buying those things with naira they are buying with dollars mm. they are bringing them in we have vehicles in nigeria we have uh, motor manufacturing companies in nigeria that can produce these vehicles mm. a lot of people are buying and they are not being killed in these vehicles we have representatives um, the Senate, all the, all, all the uh, legislators, they are our representatives, we put them there. They are supposed to represent our own interests. Well, unfortunately, it appears that um, they have gotten a different uh, identity. The moment they get there, they get a different identity. Mm. 
And of course, ask any one of them, they will tell you that's the best thing to do. Of course, it will be the best thing to do mm. uh, according to them because they are eating. And when, they are eat, when you are eating, you don't talk. Mm. Except if you don't have uh, table manners. It's, what they are talking about is about them. It's it benefiting them. So they will tell you that's the best thing to do. I don't see any reason. I don't see any reason why they need a vehicle of 160. I don't see the need why they need a vehicle of 30 million naira. Perhaps if it helps them actually discharge their duties to go around what they need to do. Oh, Maybe I see. that could be also be a good justification. Oh, I see. I see. Uh, I've been looking since th this whole story started. I've been looking for uh, some of the uh, features that those vehicles have that mm. the ones we drive on the street don't don't have. Now, are those vehicles going to fly when they get to uh, when they get to roadblocks or when they get to when they encounter traffic? Are they going to fly? Are they going to move off the the road and then fly or something? Is there anything? Do they are, they, are there any other things that are built into those vehicles that? A car that you buy for five million or ten million naira on the street will not do. Okay. The car will take you anywhere. Mm. So what is it? What's what's the class are they creating? What class are they creating? We voted for you to put you there. You were part of us when you were going, and then you got there. You were supposed well, you were supposed to get there and speak for us, mm. but you got there and then you are loading yourself uh, over us. Mm. That's exactly what they are doing. Mm. We are talking that there is no money. The ever look at look at the look at hunger on the streets mm. look at what is going on look at uh, people are dying out there and then how do you say it i don't know how i don't know, know where they get the confidence there are so many people out there that for three days have not eaten anything and they are struggling with life and then you you want to come and rub it over on, on their faces to say look uh, 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 what is it? Just 860 million naira. What is it? Hmm. I mean, so, it's so, insulting. So, do you think the term service, because earlier I and Sandra were talking about some policies that the government has put in place, perhaps a cushion subsidy, and a lot of um, um, kind of economic meltdown the country is actually going through uh, presently. And you find out that yet our representatives and our leaders are living the best of their lives. And so, do you think the term service? should be looked into and perhaps the more explanation should be done because if um, the leaders uh, uh, are, are sort of enjoying and um, amassing wealth for themselves because perhaps it's an opportunity to do so and uh, the people who they are actually of being of service to are not even getting the crumbs of of what needs to be to, to, for needs to for them to to have in the aspect of welfare uh, the social amenities infrastructure even transportation uh, so do you think the term service should should be looked into maybe before you answer the question we should pick this call hello good morning all right well, 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 so mm. go ahead sir i think um um it's uh, the, the term service, the way uh, people, uh, elected officers, the way they say is, is quite different from the way we electorally say it. Mm. Um, um, it's uh, because service in the, in the context of uh, a voter is that there, there is something, we have uh, an assignment, uh, we need people to administer our affairs, manage the economy and all that. So let's uh, come together and put somebody there we voted for them you go there and do the bidding for us but unfortunately they see it as something as um, an opportunity to have a court of the national cake and so when they get there of, of course they many a times they forget about us they forget about the voters they forget about the electorates when yeah. they get there because it's when they get there. and that's the reason why now it is uh, becoming very uh, difficult to really be able to ascertain who is going there to serve mm. because really if um, if i want to i want my people to vote for me i want to go there and serve now I just tell them look i want to give my time i want to sacrifice my time i want to go there and serve you now it is for the people to say yes i want you to go and serve us or, or not now if they agree to say look go and serve us fine if they say don't go and don't go and serve us now i shouldn't there shouldn't be anything there that sh uh, i should that should bring anything that should bring compulsion to say mm. look it is either you vote for me or, or not. not. 
Now, if it gets to the, if, by the time it gets to the level that it's either you do it for me or not, then something else had come into it. And that's the reason, and that's where we, the electorate, start getting it wrong. Now, when anybody comes to us and say, and is trying to compel us to serve, I mean, to, to vote for them to say, to go and serve us, then it's not going there to serve us. That means there is something, there are something that is on the line. I mean, there are some hidden agenda. Mm. Now, because you are using your time. And people say, no, I, we don't want to serve. Then go back, go and use your time meaningfully for something else that will benefit you more than going to serve the people. Mm. So they go there, and the moment they get there, they see it as an opportunity that now we have been given the knife. I have the knife now, and here is the cake. So what I need to do is cut the cake, feed myself. Mm. When I'm fed, then I might be, uh, think of uh, how, to, how to manage the crumbs that I have. That's exactly what is happening mm. in Nigeria. But the problem per se lies with we, the people. Mm. We, the people, need to change our orientation. Mm. We need to change the way we see politicians. All right, before you continue, mm. let's take this call. Mm. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Yeah. I am Wilfred. I'm coming from Alambra State. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I I just want to make this contribution. And it's quite simple. The problem with our lawmakers and our leaders is that they have no sense of history. If they have any sense of history, whether of Nigeria history or world history, they will not be doing what they are doing now. They think that uh, uh, 160 million bulletproof SUV will save them when the masses rise. They think that armored plated cars will save them when the masses rise. They think that the Nigerian army will save them when the masses rise because they have no sense of history. Men, they have pushed the Nigerian masses to the brink. They have pushed the people to the point where people are eating from the quota. When they rise, not even three times the Nigerian army can stop the masses. The, the, in, the insensitivity, the callousness, the lack of consideration for the human person that has characterized this government, it, it irritates. And I, I want to let you know, because they are there, they don't know what's happening. People's anger has reached the top. Mm -hmm. They are just waiting for a single, a small spark that will ignite the conflagration. Mm -hmm. And I understand that armored vehicles, armored SUV, soldiers with generals with, with their ranks reaching from their head to their shoulders will not stop the masses when they rise. All right, I promise you. All right, thank you so much. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good I'm morning. Happy. Good morning to you. Yeah, this is Akim calling from Lagos. Good morning. All right, uh, and hello to your analyst. Anyway, let me go to my point. Uh, you know, yesterday, almost the same thing. Mm. Now, what the, the truth of the matter in this country is that right from 1960, from inception, we got independent. To be sincere to ourselves all, our leaders or the politicians, to, to be specific, they are the only one actually enjoying Nigeria in the sense that the rest of us, there's nothing to write home about calling the, the state called Nigeria. I'm so sorry to say this. To say this. And if you look at uh, those, I'm not in support of those agitators, okay? I'm not in support of uh, agitation. But the truth of the matter is that what energizes people to support the agitators is because of the lack of sincerity of the leaders. The agitators can easily get people influenced and they will accept what they say. Mm. And that is, you understand, because everybody comes to understand that the unity, I mean, the coming together of Nigeria is not of use to them. Okay. Only useful for the so-called leader that have been representing them right from 1960. They are not here to, 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 to criticize the present uh, administration or the previous. The all of them is the system that I don't know how they are going to rectify it. They don't have human feeling. That's just the point. How can the one person, 300 and something million, why could simply because you want to protect, protect yourself? Did you agree with us from our, from the place where you are, the you are elected from that? Okay, when I get there, this is the kind of thing I'm going to ask. Please, let us know only emphasize on the, uh, uh, 
and National Assembly or the legislature. Look, if you check the ministers themselves, check the uh, civil service. The like, civil service is even the worst in this country, I'm telling you. So if Mr. Tinubu, I know he wants to do something, but the truth of the matter is that it's a matter of two uh, uh, life and death. So he has to sacrifice. I'm not saying he's expected to sacrifice himself. And what I'm trying to say is that he has to. Okay. Because the truth of the matter is that we are not enjoying the country right from the onset. The only people enjoying this country are the, are the few from among us, and those ones are the politicians. If they think that uh, 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 policy, policy is not a place for business, it's a place to give service. So if they want to really make money, they should go and learn music, they should go and invest in crypto, they should go and learn football. So this oh, is a huge so money or whatever, but not in government like this. This okay. are this wickedness. Thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you. All right, before that call, you were saying where well, you have a problem is with the with the masses. Yeah, it's, it's with the masses mm. because we the masses we we um, we glorify politicians. Mm. I mean, elected officers we glorify them in such a way that it gets it gets into their heads. Now we call our governors the uh, your excellencies mm. and all that. I mean, even legislators will go there. I mean, they are supposed things they were supposed to be doing, they are not doing anymore because, um, where they are, those in the National Assembly and those in other places, they are there, um, as um, they are on errand, they are supposed to come back to their constituencies and then tell us these are the things mm. that we have done on your behalf, mm. this is how far we have gone. Nobody, no, no, them is doing that, and of course, we don't, we most of um, electors don't even care. They go, they look, all they need is just give me something and don't worry. I will, I mean, they sell their bat right. Mm. I mean, many of us don't really know that it matters, that a single vote I can't. Now, many people will tell you, I don't care, I will just give me money, I'll give you a vote and all that. And of course, the moment you have done that, you have sold your bat right, you don't really have uh, um, the right, you don't have the lever, you won't have the confidence to come and question that person. To say what you promised to do, you are, you yeah, didn't do it. because uh, I mean the, the vote you gave was actually procured was I mean was bought, it was paid for and then you take it. Mm. So I think we need to change our orientation mm. and then the, you know the the kind the nature and the orientation of the people will determine the kind of leadership mm. that they will get. Okay, uh, I'm actually happy you mm. you spoke about the role of the people in the whole of uh, this uh, things because I've had. A uh, situation where these legislators they complain that uh, we have to get this money, we have to acquire this thing because at the end of the day, we'll go back home and our constituents want something or the other from us, right? But then earlier, you spoke about um, um, patronizing uh, perhaps um, our own locally made uh, uh, product um, instead of foreign. Perhaps if these cars were even made in Nigeria, like the Innocent uh, and the likes, maybe perhaps it will help us boost the economy in, in, in some way. I'll give an instance. Um, uh, on a tweet, uh, Ben Murray Bruce uh, was saying something about, uh, we're complaining about the uh, the, era, uh, the dollar rising and the rest of it. Yes, mm. we do not patronize uh, our own product. And someone had to like call his attention that uh, all those designer suits you wear are they made in Nigeria? Mm. Or the cars you have are they made in Nigeria or something? So maybe as holistically, if we uh, kind of um, embrace our own locally products, but then do you think we have what it takes in Nigeria in terms of enabling environment uh, on its own for you to acquire to to start up a business in Nigeria? It takes a whole lot of money. It takes a whole lot of time. So enabling environment. Do you think we have what it takes? You see, that's why I started by saying that uh, mo uh, the problems we have is lack of sincerity. Mm. Now, this is a government that comes uh, that came in and said, "Look, that's, there are so many things that have gone wrong. Now we're going to right the wrongs." Now, this is a government that uh, gave us an impression that look, um, some people have been sleazing us uh, through subsidy um, regimes and all that. We're going to take that off. And uh, this is the president that comes up to tell us, I plead with Nigeria to say, look, just bear with us. Things will get better and all that. Did he really plead? He said it is, it is turn. 
Uh, no, no, that's that's before election. Yeah. But after election, he came. He did. I mean, he had been telling uh, one of the stations have been rolling it uh, over. I mean, all all the time mm. to say, look, I really understand that uh, the times are hard. Yeah. I mean, things will get better. I know. Okay, if um, if the government, if if the president is saying this is what uh, should be done, there are so many things that he should have done. I expect that uh, the government will say, look, uh, during the time of the military, there is a law that um, uh, the car, the official vehicle then was Pojo. Pojo was being, I mean, was being assembled in Nigeria then. Up on the time of uh, uh, Babangida as the president, the limousine was using was produced by, by Pojo. All official cars in all, uh, ministry, uh, all uh, federal ministries and all that were Pojo produced in Nigeria. Then we weren't having this uh, issue of um, uh, forex uh, uh, issues, I mean, uh, stresses that we are having now. What stops government by, from saying, look, okay, if you don't like um, uh, innocent, that maybe because of this or what or that, then come up with another. Now, and what stops government from patronizing uh, um, uh, innocent? So, okay, innocent, this is what we're going to do. We're going to partner with you. We want to make money. And then make it, if the standard of vehicles that innocent is producing is not up to what you want, then give a standard. Yeah. That's why we have the standard organization yeah. uh, uh, in Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. Then they come up and say, look, you have to up your quality and all that. Now, there's so many, look at uh, the, 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 the policy reverser that reversed uh, the, uh, the 43 items when they were banned uh, from uh, uh, obtaining a uh, uh, forex mm. and all that. All those ones now were open again. And this had further uh, put uh, uh, added stress mm. to uh, the, the, uh, I mean, what the Naira is having uh, okay. already. Mm -hmm. So all of these things that we can produce in Nigeria, what stops us from saying, uh, why, is God, why is, it is it so difficult for government to say, look, these things you cannot bring it into nigeria we have rice in nigeria mm. now why do we need imported rice now we have so many up to up to two peak that we are even important to speak in nigeria mm. there's so many things that we can we can do and this is an economy that is not producing anything everything we want to buy everything we want to use we buy it will surprise you to hear that some people are, are importing uh, water people mm. are importing oil into nigeria Oil. I mean, uh, I'm talking uh, palm oil. I think people are importing palm oil. People are importing granite oil to Nigeria. What stops us from getting? We have these things here. We have all of these things. Here. Mm -hmm. Why? Is, why is it so difficult? I think it, it's a problem with our taste. But that taste can be changed by government, by government uh, policies. Now, I want to buy a bottle of oil. This is the oil that is produced in Nigeria, and the, this is uh, uh, the one that is imported. Mm -hmm. Government can come up and say, if you are buying the one that is produced in Nigeria, because if government wants to say it, everybody has a uh, human right, mm -hmm. I don't want to infringe on that. Fine. If you are buying a bottle of oil that is produced in Nigeria, buy it for 1000 If you want to bring anyone that will be for one side, it should be higher. Yeah, but, okay. yes, but, but yet, you, you understand that the higher, uh, the, the, it's uh, perceived in this part of the world that the higher the price, the most likely uh, the quality uh, in this part of the, the, the world is relative. Mm -hmm. It's relative. A lot of people just look, it at, look at it like that. Mm -hmm. This is Nigeria. People will use Nigerian oil. People will take Nigerian oil. They will take it out to the Republic of Benin, repackage it and bring it back. But and they will tell you it's from Spain. Mm -hmm. And when you buy, I mean, because of that madness, because of that belief, because of that, because uh, of that uh, pref preference for uh, uh, for important things. When you test it, it's the same thing. You say, oh yes, I think this one tastes, tastes better. And in reality, they are the same thing, coming from the same place. So I think government needs to take drastic uh, measure to make sure that all of i mean this uh, 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 perception is mm. changed mm. but it will not change when those who are talking about it uh, about changing it mm. are not changing mm. themselves exactly. so the leaders will be seen as doing the right thing mm -hmm. for the followership for us to then follow suit and say okay because our leaders are doing it so we're going to do it mm. all right uh, before uh, before we i uh, ask the next questions because I, I have a lot I want to talk about. In this same story, uh, the senator also mentioned, and I'm going to say it as, as it is. He said, these vehicles that you see go on Nigeria roads. If I go to home once to my constituency and I come back, I come back spending much more 
to fix vehicles because the roads are bad. Mm. So this is that he knows that something needs to be done. But rather than fix the road, he would rather buy a car mm. that can work on that road than fix the road. So you also made mention of uh, the role of the people in this. Elections are over and these things are happening now. So where, where does the role, of, where does accountability come in? And then how can the people now hold these people accountable for the things that they have done? Let's say, okay, let's forget whatever happened before or during election. But you are here now. You, you promised. You made promises before you got here. So how do people now hold them accountable for their actions? Well, uh, unfortunately, accountability is a vocabulary that is missing in, uh, in, the, in the lexicon of Nigerian policy, in the, in the mm. political circle. It's not there. Um, because uh, and of course one of the reason why it's not there is um, s most of the people that are there most of the leaders elected leaders that are there now bought their votes mm -hmm. they told uh, not, not as if they uh, as if they forced the people of course they gave money mm -hmm. to the people to vote for them and of course the people that should that should be able to come back and ask for uh, accountability and demand accountability had already sold that right to do so mm. so it's not there and they are aware of course they are aware and they know that after this election even if you decide you are not going to vote for us when i come to your place when i come to your house and say um this is this this is this and give you something and all that you will change your mind and yeah you start come not only will you vote for me mm. you will go out campaigning for people to vote for me so that's why it, it lies more um uh, with the people but for us now to change for us now to change all of this it must start from um the election period mm. where people will begin to say look at antecedents of people they are voting for now somebody just uh, somebody that had not been around had not been in our environment or in our society for a very long time got got somewhere probably gathered some uh, few uh, got a few millions mm. and then come back and say i want to contest for this position okay. now you don't expect him to really understand how things are wrong okay. there because it's not been there it, it, it doesn't know i mean what of things does it is not feeling it does not have experience of the feelings of the people there so you must get to a point that anybody that is contesting for any position at all that is going to represent whatever constituency must be somebody that is from that constituency mm. that lives in that environment that understand the pains and the needs of the people there now not it is not somebody that lives in abuja that will come to one remote area in uh, maybe cross river or sokoto or somewhere and say look i want to vote for you i want i want to contest i want you to vote for me he doesn't understand what happens there because before the election he lives in abuja and after the election he will come back to abuja and lives in abuja that's the reason why we have we have about some some governors uh, for the past administrations now even up to now we have governors of states state governors that do not even live in their state within their states mm. they are governor they are sitting governors of a state and they are not living in that state they live in other states mm. so how do you do you do you expect them to have the i mean to have the uh, adequate feelings of the pains uh, of the people of that state because they themselves are not living there so they are not living by examples mm. so it's it's not all about electoral law electoral law electoral law may be there and all that but if the people themselves if the people themselves are not willing to change nothing will change mm. laws will not do anything law will become toothless because uh, 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 as a matter of fact who is going to enforce the law and who is going to sign the law that say i mean there had been uh, somebody had breached the law or whatever when the people that are there that are supposed to demand for accountability don't even know that they have a right to ask for that now of course that, that's partly from the people and partly from government too because for for years now the national orientation agencies and all that so things that they are supposed to be doing they are not doing it now it, 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 we have had a departure from the times of mamsa where, where we see people go where we see officials of that organization mm. going out going to, onto the street going to our homes to tell the people these are your rights these are the things you know you you, you 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 have to do as a citizen we don't have that so we have left it 
to the politicians to run it the way uh, they want. It and it will be very difficult mm -hmm. for us to be able to bring them to account. But isn't that the problem of the law uh, in, 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 in an instance where a certain uh, uh, personality in government cannot be checked or cannot, it, you can't get accountability because that person has immunity? Isn't that the problem of the law? The only people that have immunity mm -hmm. by Nigerian law is the president, the mm -hmm. vice president, yes, indeed, the governor, the vice, uh, the deputy governor. Mm -hmm. Now we have uh, what, what, what happens to uh, uh, ministers, mm -hmm. what happens to legislators, what happens to commissioners, what happens to uh, board, uh, board chairmen and members of board, and all that. Nobody is demanding anything, not because, um, not, not because people are afraid of them, but grossly. People, a lot of people don't even know that all of these people need to come back and give them feedback and give them a report of what they have done. Legislators are not to go there and discuss anything without prior discussing such with their constituencies. Mm. And then they will go to the house, uh, to, the, uh, to the floor of the, uh, of the legislature and then discuss it and then come back to the people and say we have discussed this this is this are the level this is the level that we have gotten to mm. they don't know and people are not asking them to and those or oh, i mean the, the few of us that know um they call us whalers mm. because when we talk we tell the people this we have to do this right they look they, they, uh, i mean sometime in the past administration apart from calling us well as they i mean they they, they, uh, they say it's a uh, um um uh, uh, fake uh, sometimes when we say something they say it's fake news mm -hmm. or sometimes they say we are manailing them sometimes they say we are inciting people against them so and the people too i mean the people are not having matter too mm -hmm. because when they tell them they say okay the next time you go they go there they say well he's coming to i mean he's coming with his noise and all that mm -hmm. so the orientation has to start with the people mm -hmm. the people need to know that they have to be involved in government mm -hmm. that every single penny that is being spent mm -hmm. by anybody voted into power mm -hmm. up until the level of the president has to be accounted for. has to be accounted for yeah the people we need to know about it and that's the reason why there is always a budget mm. but who is questioning the budget mm. nobody so it's it has it has to do with the people we need to get ourselves reoriented and then we can key in and know that uh yes our involvement in government is so critical mm. all right now away from that conversation let's take a look at other things before we run out of time also, this headline from the Nigerian Tribune today says federal government tackles state government over deteriorating basic education. And the subheadline says learners who graduated from primary school unable to read and write. So uh, for me, I would say what is happening in the tertiary institution is beginning to trickle down to the basic education. Mm. Graduating from primary school and you're unable to read and write. Who do you hold accountable for this? Is it the students, the teachers, or the whole education sector itself? Well, um, the parents have um, their share of it. Uh, the teaching service has their share of it. And the rest goes to the government. Because the policy of government determines how things are, should determine how things run. Okay. Now, uh, the economy of um, the economy now had made a ton uh, appearance uh, into uh, 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 something that looks uh, like uh, mo most of them don't really it appears as if most of them don't really care more hmm. about uh, the welfare of the people now that's the way it appears but that's not it because they need to make ends meet now before now uh the, the culture of africa which is a uh, practice in nigeria is a uh, it's the man that works it's the man of the house mm. that works the woman of the house i mean the mother takes care of the house mm. look after the kids and all that but now today what the, what the man what the husband earns is not even enough to sustain him and his wife alone not, to, not talking about the, uh, the children he and his wife alone now he has to pay house rent mm. now he has to pay for transportation now the the wife needs to look uh, good now by the time you now ask at the student i mean the, the children going to school and all that and uh, now it is not very few people who have uh, what it takes now very few will send their their kids to private uh, to private schools mm. 
they will want to go to public schools. And of course, when you go to public schools, it's your own choice. You have to spend because uh, proprietors of a, a public school uh, started that as a business mm. because they want to make a profit. You can't stop them from making profit. Now the curriculum, private, school, private, school, private school. schools, yeah. yes. The, the, the curriculum, the curriculum is not um, is not being vetted the way I mean the way it used to be. Now, uh, when we were young, when we were in school, we were in primary school and all that, now, in a family, a textbook that um, uh, the first son, uh, I mean the first child reads, you pass it on to the others. Uh, to, uh, to the others. Mm. But today, the textbooks you used today, you are not very sure that it's going to be the same thing that we use in the next session. Mm. Now, because uh, this, it, has, uh, it has become business, people who write these textbooks, have one who people they know they go and then promote and say look mm. i use my textbook and then they will discard the one the previous one and then bring that in so that is affecting uh, the children now the children too um are not because of some of the things that they see they believe uh, when you ask a child now uh, just bring the child mm. some child and bring them together and ask them what they want to say many of them will tell you that we want to become a politician we want to become politicians when mm. we grow because they believe it is in politics that mm. money is made mm. now before now kids will tell you i want to be a lawyer mm. i want to be a doctor and all that but politicians had given uh, had, had, had given a, a kind of sign that look if you want to be rich in nigeria just go into politics yeah. and uh, the uh, the value the value system had also changed before now a pre much premium was not laid on money mm. it's a it, much premium, premium is laid I and mean, it was laid on on character when we were growing up in the, uh, i mean uh, in the 60s and all that uh, 70s and all that you see before a man in our own environment mm. i'm a young person and from uh, before a man gets married to any woman the parents of the man will do a research who is this lady mm -hmm. you want to get married to mm -hmm. they will do a research up to the great 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 grand, grand, grandparents and say what did they do mm -hmm. because they want to be sure that they are people of impeccable characters mm -hmm. but today who cares who cares now a lot of um, a lot of couples now had had uh, three four kids even before introducing themselves to their parents and all that mm -hmm. because that's what it takes that's mm -hmm. what it takes now. Mm -hmm. So everybody is, is it, 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 the, the economy is so bad mm -hmm. that everybody, what, what is on the mind of everybody is what, I'm go what is going to be my next meal. Mm -hmm. So, and that had impaired, that uh, had, had a, a negative impact mm -hmm. on, our, on our reasoning uh, system. So it, it, everybody wants to do it the quick way. Mm -hmm. Now, for us to get it back, it is government because government 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 that's what we'll talk about government 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 because it is government that is at the top mm. it's the government that decide what happens when go if government come out today to say look nobody should go out 7 a.m tomorrow morning mm. everybody will stay indoor because government has that power the people have given that power to government it is government that will sit back and then look at our educational system the curriculum mm. then look at it and then look at i mean some of the things that have been done now the parents uh the government will, will help will help the parents too when uh it, when i was in secondary school i i mean i enjoyed a uh, free education i mean uh, free uh free education tuition free mm. i i went to a tuition free uh a public school mm. now in that case my parents do not have uh, any excuse to say look um we are not doing this because we need to go out and look for money mm. to feed our kids government can do it mm. it is doable it is nothing that is look okay one take one of these vehicles take one 160 million naira vehicle mm. take that and then look at the school fee of an average um, secondary yes. school student mm. and then take that out and then use that vehicle sell that vehicle and use them and spend it the money now I am very, very sure that an average, even uh, let's say private school, an average private, uh, let, let's say uh, average public school, the maximum they will pay in a year will be maybe twenty thousand naira. Mm. Uh, that's a, a public school. Now, how many twenty thousand naira can we get from mm. one hundred and sixty mm. million? Mm. 
Now you are giving them, you putting that money to some. It's not as if they didn't have a car. It's not as if all of them in the in the uh, in the, leg uh, the leg legislative for yeah. It's not as if they walked yeah. there. They drove their vehicles there. They have vehicles that they are using. And this, you want to you? It's it, it, misplacement of priority. Yeah. The educational system. <sighs> Government, it has to start from okay, I'm happy you're saying um, mm. you brought in the government eventually mm. because earlier you said um, some of the share blames have to go to the parents, um, the, yeah. the teachers, mm. and later you said the government and you rounded it up mm. with the government because I have to go back to the story to check because uh, I, I noticed it was majorly the public school they were talking about because really uh, a parent who is perhaps has the means to will not really want to take their child to the public school and those who do not have the means to, when you go to public schools and see the deteriorating state in which it is you will not even want to send your child to the school in the first place because you might just seem that uh, feel like it's a waste of time because the teachers are not, are, are not effective efficient enough to perhaps teach or something so why not the child go do hurricane or do something else which is not uh, usually a good idea but looking at the deteriorating state uh, like I said I'm happy you brought the government uh, into it maybe to some extent the government should look at the public schools okay because the private school like you said they make profit from it so of course they try all it takes uh to sort of make the school a good environment for learning and the rest but the government school the public school should be looked into certainly it mm -hmm. has i mean they have to be looked uh, into and uh, uh, the teachers needs uh, to be i mean they, they need some motivation mm now uh because when you look at the take home pay of uh, the teacher too it's uh it's discouraging mm. and uh, before now people want to go into the teaching service mm. not very mm. few people and uh, it's only people that do not it, it's only graduate that do not have jobs now mm. that go into teaching mm. yes because they know that's uh, well let me just let me just keep this why i keep uh, uh mm. searching and all that mm. so they need to be mobilized it's um standard is falling everywhere mm. no doubt it's not in the educational system alone mm. it's falling everywhere but if a people will actually catch up um with development around the globe education is key mm. it's key most especially that we are in the uh, the we are in, we are in digital world now mm. you don't learn digital uh, this thing in the farm mm. you don't learn it anywhere you learn in the school mm. so and uh, even we have we have uh, um, we have nations now that do not have the the kind of national resources that we have in Nigeria, and uh, where they get uh, their revenue is digitally. They, they get their I mean it's through the uh, digital economy, yeah. and they are making wealth. So it's uh, it's something that if government looks into it and handle it properly, it's a revenue earning. It's a revenue earning um, uh, 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 venture. Yeah. So train people. Pull them on. Look at China. What China is making through um, IT and uh, all that now is more than what they are making from other uh, from other as, uh, yeah. other area of the economy. Look at India. Look at what they are doing. Mm. Government needs to look into it. Mm. All right. Uh, with what you've said so far, I would I would I want to say that this issue of education is a very long chain because it has to start with the economy because you made mention of the family. Mm. Something has to be fixed in that aspect so yeah. that the mothers and can also pay attention to the children, the children. and then teachers can earn well enough to also pay attention mm -hmm. and do the job mm -hmm. with passion yeah. so i don't know how uh, soon that issue is going to be fixed because we should also take into consideration that we have growing number of out of school children in nigeria mm -hmm. which is a total conversation for another day mm -hmm. but with that we'll draw the curtain today on the press coming to you live from the abuja studios of captain television thank you so much mr Oli, for joining us on the program thank you. it's Thanks been a pleasure talking to you mm -hmm. yeah thank you all right, so we'll come your way tomorrow. My name is Sandra Ago. Stay tuned to Captain Television. And I am Victoria Agui, saying you should have a splendid day ahead. Bye.